You're on. Hello, everyone. I am here with a Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good night. Tonight we're going to be in Matthew chapter 8. And, ooh, the devotion tonight is by oh. someone new. Marlene Legaspi Menar. <laughs> what? That's their name. Legaspi Menar. L-E-G-A-S-P-I. How would you pronounce it? I have no idea. I pronounced it my best. Anyway, she's new, so we'll see how she writes. And the verse that goes with her devotion tonight is um, Matthew 8, 17, which says, He took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. Amen. So let's go to Matthew chapter 8. And in Matthew chapter 8, we'll be talking about the man with leprosy, the faith of the centurion, which is a good one. I was reading that um, today, actually. Jesus heals many. Jesus calms the storm. And the healing of two demon-possessed men. Okay. I was actually, um, early this morning, when I couldn't sleep, I was looking up, because it's been on my mind. I was it's been on my mind about Peter. When, and I know how he died, but you didn't want to know when and where. And then it started telling me about all the apostles. And they didn't know about most of them. They was just guessing or what they had heard. Some, it was written about this person doing that. Then other person said it happened this way. Some was killed by the sword. Poor Bartholomew. His was the, oh. From all of them, his was horrible. They say he was crucified, but taken down before he died, then filleted. They filleted his skin while he was alive, and then beheaded him. Oh. I don't know why he got that so bad, but. But yeah, it told you a lot of it told you stuff about all of them and how they thought they died and where and everything. It was really interesting. Just uh, just type in, you know, where where did um, the apostle Peter die, and it should come up telling you about all of them. That's what it did for me. This is really interesting. I think it said Peter died about sixty. I think it was around 60 A.D., 60 years after Jesus, and he was killed by the emperor Nero, and Paul was as well. Paul and Peter were killed the same year, around the same time. Anyway, that's what we're that's not what we're here for. I'm sorry. So, chapter eight. Let's go ahead and read it. When he came down from the mountain. Large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cured of this leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priests and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished, and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you, that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, 
Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with the word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. When he arrived at the other side in the region of the Gardanians, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass the way. What do you want with us, son of God? they shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Some distance from them were a large herd of pigs they were was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. He said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the pigs and died in the water. Those tending the pigs ran off, went into town and reported all this, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the whole town went out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. Can you imagine? I'm pleading with Jesus to leave. And he'd done a good thing. I don't, under, I don't understand that. They must have been scared. I don't know why. He'd done a good thing. I don't understand why they wanted him to leave. I never understand that part. But that was chapter 8 of Matthew. Now we can read the devotion. See how good um, Marilyn writes. This is our first time reading from her. Ooh, the next one's going to have a new writer too. Okay. She says, I woke up one morning with a headache from my stressful work the day before. My initial reaction was to cry out, Jesus, please take away this pain. A few minutes later, when I rose from bed, my headache was gone, just as easily as I'd cried out. There are times when answers to my prayers do not manifest as soon as I want them to, so it still surprises me when I experience instant relief from Jesus. But the New Testament is filled with stories of how Jesus showed compassion to the sick and suffering and often they received their healing immediately. When Jesus touched the hand of Peter's mother-in-law, he was nursing a high fever. Immediately the fever left her. Or there was that intense instance when he told the crippled man to rise and pick up his mat. The man quickly jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out of the scene, leaving everyone astonished. And who could forget leave it and who could forget the story of Jarius 
whose heart sank when he heard his daughter had died. Jesus comforted him with a promise of healing and brought back his daughter to life with the touch of his hand. Jesus cares for all of us, men, women, young, old, privileged, and unprivileged. Jesus was crucified on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and the healing of our sicknesses and diseases. We can cry out to him and expect his healing touch. The pain may be gone right now, as it happened to me, or the healing may come much later. But one thing is for sure, Jesus is always concerned with our well-being. Amen. I think she wrote that pretty well, don't you? Pretty good writer. And the homework that she has tonight for us is meditate on the stories of healing mentioned above. Matthew chapter 8, verse 14 and 15. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 and 12, 1 through 12, and Mark chapter 5, verses 35 and 42 through 42. Trust Jesus to heal your ailment. Trust him to heal a friend who may be physically or emotionally suffering. Share these scriptures on healing to encourage that person. All right, guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed the Bible study. And God willing, I'll be back with another one again soon. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. Bye, guys. I hope you guys have a great night's sleep.